<laughs> Welcome. This is Rachel K. with Looks Like Film. Going to edit uh, 12 photos here today with Don and Helen's Presets for the Tribe Archipelago. I think I say that wrong. Archipelago? Archipelago. Archipelago presets. So I'm going to, this is the first of a series of three videos I'm going to do that will uh, kind of just go over how these presets work in different lighting situations and maybe help you pick out which pack you want or the couple of packs that work for your shooting situation. I've been playing with these now for a couple of weeks. Uh, I got to pre-test them and I'm super happy to have all of them as I find different things work well in different situations. So I'm hoping to show you guys that. So I'm gonna screen share now and get this whole pot started. And if you join in, feel free to ask any questions. Uh, otherwise, if you're on YouTube, feel free to go ahead and make a comment um, or on Google Plus, and I will get to it when I can. I'm gonna hide this little guy. All right, so I asked a few friends for some images and different lighting situations. I got 12 photos queued up for you guys. And for Don and Helen's, I'm gonna start here in what I think is the most ideal lighting situation to be using their presets in. Um, I would say Don and Helen, Helen are very much so of a moodier pack. Uh, there are, they are from the Canary Islands is where they currently live, which is an archipelago. So that's kind of cool. Anyway, so we'll get started here uh, and go through the different presets in Don and Helen's pack on this image. So this is the first one. I love the greens are still very natural. There's less contrast. Uh, if it were me, I would automatically, oop, maybe not that much, increase the exposure, exposure on this image. So that's already, that just looks perfect to me. So one click exposure, I feel the white balance is great as shot. So I don't think I need to change that. Sometimes that'll be the next step that I do, or I'll change the white balance if it's so drastic before I even apply a preset. Uh, so number two has a, a wonderful thing with the browns going on. Again, I would say one click and done. Um, I like the white balance in this, but sometimes I think white balance is even a personal preference. This is much more magenta skin tone. Um, this is Don and Helen number three. I do love the greens in it. So when I've been playing with this one, I adjust the white balance a little bit more and play with the reds. And number four, which is my favorite on the pack for, especially for lighting situations like this, just such a nice clean edit um, here with an outdoor image. Of course, depending on how you like, whether you like it darker or lighter would depend on how much you would increase your exposure. I like it just about there. And number five is much more moody and contrasty. And I think that also works really well for this image. We'll go to the black and whites. I love this super clean black and white. Um, I love the contrast in it. I think it's really lovely. You can still see a lot of what's the detail in the shadows and the highlights. So I really like that one. And this one just kind of brings up the shadows a little bit more and it was a little less punchy contrasty and kind of a little matte thing going on, which I like. Yeah, the tone curves matte. Okay, so that's that image. Um, now I wanna go ahead and do one of the less ideal lighting situations and see how their presets work here. So this is uh, from my friend. This is, these both are actually from a friend, my friend Lauren Lindley, who's a wonderful photographer out in Lake Tahoe. Thank you so much for sending me these. She sent me tons of great images from different lighting situations. So I appreciate that. Um, so we'll go through with these. This is Don and Helen one and Actually, hold on, let me, settings, resell settings. Um, so this is really nice and dark. Um, so it works really well for the moodiness, but you can see as soon as you apply one of these presets, that's Don and Helen one, it automatically is way darker. So I found that Don and Helen's exposure bump is always necessary, at least for like my, my taste. They are much more of a moodier, photographers so um and this one i might adjust so nah, i don't like that so this one definitely needs some white balance adjustment to make the skin look nice but that's number one 
Number two does give us a lot more of what's going on in the shadows. I actually really like that for this one. Let's see. They do have really cool tinting going on in all of their images or all of their presets and that I like a lot. Uh, number three tends to be my favorite of theirs for indoor images. So I just like think it's perfect and you don't have to bump the exposure as much. Gives a really nice moody feel. And number four. Number five, again, is much more moody, contrasty. I kind of really like it because it really punches out these two, but someone might want to increase the exposure again a little bit. And we're almost at like a stop and a half exposure increase right here, which I found is generally because I also shoot underexposed where I'm at for it. And we'll look at the black and whites. I love black and white getting readies. And these two presets that they have are so wonderful black for black and white getting readies. I really like number six for this one. And number seven is really nice too. Um, I just, it has a little bit more highlights and I actually like the richness of the blacks in this one a little bit better for that image. So our before with the exposure, there's the black and white and my other favorite number three. So you can see what it can do both indoors and outdoors. Now we're gonna go to an image that I found challenging to play with. Oh, hello, there's someone here. I need to open up my Q&A in case anyone. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm just going through these 12 images uh, with Don and Helen's presets to show what they can do. Uh, again, I think this is also from Lauren Lindley. Um, obviously, this is a very dark space. She's shooting at ISO 3200 um, with 32. So she must have been on a zoom lens with an F of 4.0. If it were me and I didn't have, I would probably have rented a Prime, but that's just like a personal preference just because of how dark it is in here. Uh, we'll see if we can save save this image a little bit. Um, otherwise, I'd probably run denoise on it. Okay. Oh. Someone, oh, someone Facebook messaged me, sorry. All right, so Don and Helen won. Already it's super dark. It's darker than it was when we shot it. So we need to bring up that exposure quite a bit. Um, I would keep this at a moodier tone, not in trying to go all the way up. You can see our histogram here, it's pretty dark, but this is about as far as I would go because even, um, and probably with this too, because we have so much natural grain, I would probably remove the grain and I don't feel like doing that, but I would probably remove grain and maybe even run, I use denoise if I have a lot of grain issues, so, and, I wonder if this is supposed to be a white dress. Mm, kind of looks like it. I'm like the laziest white balance person ever, so don't judge my white balancing. So we have our before, with this is with the exposure up, almost two full stops, and our after. So you can see how, how lovely the toning is with number one there. I really like number one for this, but actually, number two, again, has those rich browns. Uh, yeah, feel free to submit questions if you want. <coughs> Excuse me, running off of a cold. And Don and Helen's number three. This is just already brighter on this image. I think, again, number three works really, really, really well for indoor images with tough lighting situations. And number four. Number five, our black and white six, and black and white seven, which I would probably choose if I were doing black and white, black and white seven. Again, this is the before. So you can see that at that exposure increase, these presets really bring this to life. Okay, now we're gonna go to a little bit of a better lighting situation. Um, I'm trying to remember who sent me this one. This was Leslie Manning sent me this. And actually I've been working both on, I'm a Canon shooter and I'm currently working, I think all of the images I have in here are from Nikon. So that's kind of cool. Um, I have found not a huge difference in, in the coloring. The only thing you have to really look at is white balance. So 
Um, and I think that's just kind of normal for everyone. Uh, so let's go through Don and Holland's presets here. I want you guys to be able to see this stuff, so I'll bring that back. So with this image, we have Don and Helen 1. Let's see if we just do auto white balance, what's gonna happen? Okay, Don and Helen 1, I really like that. I might increase the contrast a little bit personally because um, it really does fade out the blacks. Don and Helen 2. Don and Helen 3, and 3 really lightens things up, which is why I like it so much for indoor. So I would probably reduce the exposure on that one. Don and Helen 5, I personally like this look a lot for this image. Here's your black and white, 6 and 7. I wouldn't probably use black and white 7 on that. I'd probably use 6 and kind of adjust from there because I like the contrast of it. So there's that image. We're going to go to another tricky lighting situation. So this was, who sent me this one? Oh, yeah. Yep, this was also my friend Lauren Lindley. Uh, tough light going on. You got a crazy shadow. Um, this will make things interesting. So that's one, it's down to one. Uh, we're gonna increase the exposure, uh, maybe not that much because I don't wanna lose. So yeah, maybe that much. It's always hard for me to make these big decisions in front of a group of people, like of how much noise I would wanna include and because of how high I'm increasing the exposure for this, I would probably use denoise or something like that. Uh, number two, again, nice brown color. Number three, always love it. Um, there's auto white balance, let's see what happens. Nothing. Always love it for indoor. And even for this one, I might decrease it a little bit. And then because you have that weird, the weird DJ light things, um, I would probably just go straight to black and white, honestly. Unless you're using OCF, you get some weird stuff going on. There's number four. And these, again, are a lot darker and moodier. These are not my favorite presets for indoor, but number three works really, 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 really well for indoor weirder lighting. It's a lot easier to tweak than a lot of the Visco stuff. I would say their pack is also the closest to a like, Visco feel of that darker, moody feel of the three. Um, so I would opt to go black and white on this image just because of the weird shadows and everything going on. So I would probably go with black and white six or seven on this one. So again, this is our before. Really, really dark image. Got harsh shadows. Go away, cat. My cat thinks that this is the time to hang out. And let's do another tricky light situation. Here we have two ladies inside with this fantastic sign there. <laughs> and I know automatically I'm going to have to increase this exposure. I'm going to see what auto does. Yep, I like auto white balance for that. Lazy white balance person again. So Don and Helen won. And the before and Don and Helen won. I love it. It automatically just brightens things up. The toning is really, really great. Makes skin tones still look fantastic, which I've always found a problem with Vosco. Um, I'm not that I'm like trying to say they're bad because I all of my presets that I currently use or did use until this came around were all based off of Vosco ones. So, and then number two, I just love the brown tones. Um, I think this one works really cool outside in forests and stuff too. Again, before and after. And number three, this is the one I mentioned. I will keep mentioning it. It works super well for an indoor situation. Uh, you can see how much it just already brightens up the image and you, so you don't have to adjust your exposure as much. And number four, and we'll do before, after a four. And number five, number five is a lot moodier, darker. Um, I find I have to have a little bit higher of an exposure increase if I'm using this in an indoor situation. So you have the before, you can see it 
doesn't change the dynamic range as much. And then their black and whites both, I think, always have to have the exposure increased a lot. You can see it actually made it darker. This one's really contrasty. You can see the contrast is pulled all the way up. So it might be as simple as just like, oh, a quick little, little bit less of contrast, but and number seven, which is a lot less contrast. So you see it's much more true to the original image. So I think with this pack you can find indoor outdoor works really, really well. Let's try a different outdoor lighting situation. Uh, no, that's not the one I wanted to do. I wanted to do this one. Okay, <coughs> excuse me guys. All right, so I haven't even touched this one yet. And we're gonna go through their pack. So Don and Helen one, Ah, I just love the tones. I think it's just beautiful. Her skin looks so creamy already. Something I would struggle for ever working on my other presets to get that look. And it just is perfect with one click. I would probably increase the exposure just a smidgeroo. Let's see if this works. I got a new mouse and it pisses me off. Sorry, excuse my French. Maybe not that much. I tend to go for a moodier look too, guys. So, um, this pack speaks to my my feelings. So again, I will be doing videos of the other packs as well. Those will come tomorrow. I have a lot of stuff to do today. Uh, but this is just Don and Helen going through Don and Helen's and hopefully looking at them can help you decide. So this is a before of this image and then Don and Helen two. Don and Helen three um, brightens things up a lot. Again, works really well inside and that's the before and after, go back to a four. And Don and Helen four, before, after, and Don and Helen five. I really actually like this one a lot for this, this setting. Um, one spoke to me there the most. And let's check out the black and whites. Love it, very contrasty, works really well. Nice, nice even cast light. And then number seven, which I think works better if you have some trickier lighting situations. So going into another one. Oh, this is a cool image. I think these are all from my friend Lauren, Lauren Lindley. I was like, someone sent me images. I don't want to do my own anymore. <laughs> so <coughs> thanks, Lauren. So this is Don and Helen one on this image. There's the before again, love it. Might increase the exposure a little, but I'm actually just gonna leave it there to show you what it does to the image. And two. And three. Again, brightens things up quite a bit. I'm not a big fan of what it does to greens, so I tend to change the greens on number three. And four, I love, I like four a lot for this image. And five, this one, I always end up bumping exposure because it's very contrasty. <coughs> but I love all the colors. Ooh, six black and white makes this really cool. Again, I'd probably bump the exposure a little bit. And seven. So you have this before. I love the, the black and whites in this pack are probably my two favorites, black and whites. Um, I'll probably say that about every pack and everything because I have all three and I'm obsessed with all of them for different reasons. So let's do another nice outdoor portrait. Ooh, we've got a pretty bride. Pretty, so you can really see probably in this image what, what Don and Helen's are gonna do to your greens. Um, which for people, some people is really important. This makes kind of more of a neon greenish. This is number one, which is very on point with like a filmish look, more like a more of a mastiny thing going on. Number two, and let's see, what are we gonna do? Are you gonna try and make it really? No, I don't want it that yellow. Her dress was probably white. And I always have a hard time too with white balance if I don't know the actual color of the dress. So, and this one I'm actually reducing the exposure and I'd probably bring down the highlights on all the presets. So this was number two. I changed the white balance a little bit so it's a little bit warmer. Um, auto white balance tried to make me make it crazy but I'm not for that life. 
And number three, again, makes kind of a pinkier skin tone. I do love how soft these greens are. I would reduce these highlights, maybe reduce the exposure just a little bit more. Number four gives, I think this is probably the closest to what the greens actually looked like. And number five is that really punchy one. Um, so you can see the before and then number five. I forgot to show you the before of four. Let's do four, before and four. So I do like what it does to the greens. And let's check out the black and whites. Ooh, I feel like that's perfect for this lighting situation. Like I said, this one works really well in a nice even light. And you can see the detail in her dress really well. And then number seven's nice if you want like of a more of a matte look to it. So cool. There's that. I think I have one more that I was going to do for you guys. Um, ooh, this one's good because it has some yellows in it. You can see what it does to the yellows. So I already know I'm going to have to increase the exposure of this baby. Again, all these images are um, Nikon images. I shoot Canon. I asked a bunch of friends to send me images and like only my Nikon friends send me images. I was sick of my own work. So I wanted to work on someone else's. So um, if, if you have any questions about the differences between Nikon and Canon, go ahead and ask. I haven't really found very many at all, except that white balance needs to be adjusted and your camera profile is different. All right, so this is Don and Helen one. I like this, this gives like a cool fall look to it. I really like it. And I probably bump exposure, maybe a little bit more. Okay, so this mouse doesn't work very well. So yeah, that's a nice fall and makes, the toning is a lot of greens in number one. Number two, I like this as well with the browns. So there's the before and after. Number three is again, a lot lighter, works really, really well indoors. If you're having, if you have this pack and you're having issues, play with this one on your indoor images. I think it works really well for Im indoor images. Otherwise for outdoor, you just don't need to expose, uh, overexpose as much or increase exposure. Number four, um, this is one that I gravitate to in this pack for a lot of these woodsy outdoor images. I just love the toning. And number five, gives a lot of a moodier, more of a matte-like feel before and after. And we'll do number six. Not a big fan of this black and white in this lighting situation. I would reduce the contrast just a smidge, but, um, I love, I like their black and whites a lot. And then number seven is a lot brighter of a black and white, so you don't have to expose as much. All right, I think I have two more images to go through, but I feel like you guys, I've shown quite a range of lighting situations and what uh, Don and Helen's set can do for those. Again, I'm gonna actually use these exact same images in the next two videos, uh, which I will be working on tomorrow. Um, so that you can see the differences. Uh, I didn't want to go through every single preset on just a couple images. I wanted you guys to see a few more lighting situations and a different photographer since the last video you just got to look at my work and uh, a few other people's. So I hope this helped uh, you decide whether you want to buy Don and Helen's pack from the Tribe Archipelago. Archipelago? I can't say it, guys. I should be better at saying it. <laughs> Packs. And if you have any questions, feel free to just leave a comment or message me and I can hopefully answer it at the beginning of my next video. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day, guys. Bye.